guys. This uh, movie is made from my uh, paper published uh, JPO. I will show you later how I can obtain these different uh, waves. And you can see internal tides are everywhere in the open ocean and mainly generated, you know, from these uh, uh, ridges, uh, these uh, uh, streets. So I will play it again if I can. Wavelengths. So you have yellow, yellow, there's one wavelength. So this is based on satellite observation. So this signal is about, uh, about like one or two centimeters uh, at sea surface height. Also, you can see some uh, pets without the internal tide, that is not because no internal tide is there. That is because the set altimetry, uh, my product was ruined by the strong eddies there because we have, this is ACC region and some uh, crucial extension region over there. We have uh, very strong summer massive go eddies. So the eddy signal is, uh, eddy signal have an uh, amplitude like uh, tens of centimeters but the uh, internal wave only have uh, SSH about uh, one or two centimeters. That is why uh, my product was ruined. So uh, that means I am still uh, developing my uh, program to, to uh, study internal tides over there in the future. So that movie gave us, uh, that movie gave us uh, the horizontal, uh, geography maps of internal tides. And the internal tides in the vertical, uh, internal tides have uh, different modes, vertical modes. So these modes are controlled by an uh, orthogonal equation. So you, you give an, if I have a stratification profile, and if I have a ocean depth, I can solve this equation and it gives, um, f uh, for example, mode one, mode two, and mode three. If, uh, vertical structure like this one. And this one gives the vertical uh, displacement of the isopycnal. And its derivative of, by this equation gives us the horizontal uh, velocity of the current. So internal tides have, in simple internal tides have vertical, two different vertical structure like this, mode one, mode two. And uh, the velocity is also uh, solved from this equation. This is, uh, uh, is called the uh, eigenvalue velocity. So if we have eigenvalue velocity, if we, and we know the tidal frequency, and then the local near inertial frequency, that's F, so we can calculate uh, the phase velocity of, uh, the, of the internal tides. And uh, this map gives uh, the horizontal wavelength of internal tides for mode one, mode two, and mode three. Uh, these maps give us uh, the horizontal scale of internal tides. That means for mode one, we have uh, wavelengths about 120 or 150 kilometers long. It's very, uh, the, the, the wavelengths are very small. So that is why it's hard to uh, extract the internal tides from satellite altimetry and from other satellite observations. And uh, for mode one, it's the longest horizontal wavelengths. For mode two, mode three, we have even smaller uh, wavelengths. So that that is uh, that. I, so uh, and later I will show that I can 
separate mode one, mode two, and mode three by their different wavelengths. So uh, here is a summary of uh, internal tide features we just uh, saw. So internal tides are generated by barotropic tidal current flow over topographic features. And globally, barotropic to baroclinic conversion is about, about one terawatt. And uh, the low mode internal tide can travel up to thousands of kilometers from their generation. And at the sea surface, internal tides have uh, amplitude about uh, uh, one or two uh, centimeters. But inside the ocean, uh, the maximum amplitude could be uh, tens of meters. And uh, the wavelength is, uh, uh, for mode one, is 130 kilometers. Mode two is 70 kilometers. And also we can see we have a multiple mode that I call it mode one, mode two, mode three. So we have a multiple uh, baroclinical mode. And for each mode, we, can count, we have waves in different directions. That's just now we saw southbound, northbound, and, you, and uh, east, west. So, so this really have a multi-wave uh, interference. And, uh, and it's a small, small vertical, a small horizontal wavelengths, and also the very small sea surface height fluctuation. So all these features make internal tides uh, very difficult to extract uh, in the ocean. And uh, another feature is uh, internal tides are time variable because the ocean, the background is, of the ocean is, uh, uh, is changed seasonally and also interannually and some large scale uh, circulation, meso scale eddies. So all this will affect the generation and propagation of internal tides. So why we care about uh, the internal tides in the ocean? That is because uh, internal tide, you know, the barotropic tide, you know, when they flow over this, uh, uh, like this is Hawaii, the submarine ridges, about one terawatt uh, was uh, uh, converted from a barotropic tide to internal tide. So this, this paper, this nice paper is uh, published by uh, Gary Egbert and Ray, that's uh, about 20 years ago. And they shows this generation of internal tide. Before that, uh, people uh, used to think most of the tide dissipation occurred in the shallow ocean, like uh, Yellow Sea here, or like uh, the shallow European continental shelf. And the, this work really show us we have a very strong internal tides generation. And this internal tide is important for ocean mixing. Uh, that is another important paper by uh, uh, by Ward Frank and uh, Carl Wins. They show uh, uh, a summary of uh, the energy sources and the ocean dissipation, and then the marid the meridian ocean circulation uh, driven by the ocean mixing. And uh, and following uh, uh, that work. Uh, offered uh, study the uh, internal tide by uh, moorings. And he examined uh, all available moorings in, uh, in the database. And to uh, first, he searched for moorings with uh, more than four uh, measurement in the vertical. That is because we want to uh, study the, that is because the, the, the internal tide have a mode structure. To separate uh, mode one and mode two internal tides, you have to have, have vertical, vertical measurement. And he uh, found about uh, 80 moorings is uh, uh, quantify, qualified for this calculation. And then he calculated the energy flux that shows uh, the arrow, the green arrows here. And the background map is from uh, uh, Agbert and Ray paper. So, and uh, Matthew Alpert's uh, result shows the internal tides, the energy flux is away from major generation site. And then uh, the internal tide can travel like uh, long distances. But we know nothing about the propagation, you know, uh, in this, like uh, in this area. And, uh, and uh, 
and the waves it, uh, themselves, we just, he just shows the energy flux. So that is why we need a satellite. So uh, here are uh, two uh, very important papers about uh, uh, internal tides from satellite altimetry. So uh, this one is uh, from Richard Ray and uh, uh, Gary uh, here. So Richard Ray has uh, uh, told this story many times how uh, Gary and Richard they together <laughs> uh, found this feature. Uh, yeah, so shows the first shows for the first time internal tide can be detected by satellite altimetry, and it's uh, it's uh, the story is if you have a, a long track. Uh, data and uh, you do harmonic analysis. So these lines, this amplitude gives you already, uh, you know, the large scale feature. This is a phase. And they found they have wiggles on this uh, smooth, uh, uh, now, the, the barotropic tide should have smooth amplitude, but they found the wiggles. So these wiggles are features of uh, internal tides. And uh, this paper is really a surprise at that time uh, because uh, uh, Carl Wentz have wrote a review paper a uh, long time ago shows internal tide usually should be incoherent. That means cannot be detected by satellite altimetry. And the internal tide should not travel long distance. But this paper really, you know, uh, make a breakthrough and shows uh, we have we should have a new uh, understanding of internal tides. And following this work, Richard Ray and uh, and Cartwright they published another paper shows uh, here is Hawaii. So they use a plan wave fit method, just using topics Poseidon data, and shows uh, they have uh, uh, this is energy flux shows the uh, Hawaii radiate internal tides both. Northbound and southbound. Now here is from Alaska, so you can see internal tides really uh, travel a uh, long distance and bring energy from their generation. And uh, so the problem of this this product is uh, the energy flux is low, uh, is relatively low compared to mooring measurement. So we need uh, following this work. Uh, I made a. Uh, feel uh, improvement to uh, prove you know that a product. So one thing is uh, uh, straightforward. So uh, Richard used just uh, the topics data from uh, 1992 to 2001. I mean for that paper, at that time uh, he used this data, and then uh, with time we have more and more data altimeter data available. Like this is the topics in along the. Uh, tandem track, and also another internal tide series, um, um, another satellite series called ERS, and another uh, satellite is the GL set follow on. So this figure shows their uh, ground tracks here, and this one is ground tracks at high latitudes. So we can see if we have more internal tide, if we have more satellite ground, ground tracks, we will have a dense tracks and, uh, and when we do plan wave fitting, we will have more data and we will have a smaller fitting window to catch more small scale features. For example, this is just the red one. Red, red, red one shows the topic tracks, so you can see the tracks are very uh, sparse, so uh, the wavelength is uh, the wavelength is this mode one m wavelength is this uh, black box. So you can see uh, that is why only topic is Poseidon we cannot detect uh, some small scale uh, feature. Another improvement is uh, I improve the the, the method is uh, plan wave plan wave analysis. So this uh, plan wave analysis is uh, like uh, Eric, uh, uh, like uh, Richard Ray shows in his paper and. Uh, uh, one thing he didn't do is uh, he used uh, a special standing wave feature. He didn't choose the, he didn't resolve waves in different direction. So and then I, I will show you in an example later, say I can resolve this uh, 
uh, waves in different direction, like I showed uh, for the southbound and northbound waves. And another uh, uh, feature of this method is if we have uh, a lot of more, you know, SS data in this window, we can really reduce that non-tidal sig non signal. That is an uh, uh, issue uh, in the plan wave fit. And uh, the, the two parameters, one is uh, wave number key and one is uh, uh, tidal frequency uh, from a, a theoretical value. So here's one example. So yeah, here is one example. So um, if we want to fit waves using data in this window at this point, I use all this data in this window and uh, ground tracks of satellite. And it's at each of these data points, I have a time series. When I fit waves following this equation, uh, and then I pull out amplitude versus direction. So I fit waves in every direction. When I pull out amplitude versus direction, I have these lobes. So each lobe is one, uh, is one uh, internal tidal waves. If I remove these waves, so you can see the variance, this is the variance reduction if I remove one wave. So if I remove this wave, the variance is reduced by this number. So, so that is why how I pick the first wave. After I pick this wave, I remove it, and then I repeat this process uh, using the rest, using the, the residual SSH. And I do it again, and now you can see the wave number one was gone because I have removed it. And the second wave now becomes the biggest. So I, I, I pick the second wave, and then after I pick the second, remove the second wave, I do it again, and then I can go to the third wave. So by this uh, wave, by this plan wave analysis, I can really separate you know, waves in different directions. And then I have three waves at this point, and I uh, sum them sum them together. I got uh, the internal tide in at this point. So that is how plan wave analysis uh, uh, work, works. And another improvement is uh, is uh, on the model uh, decomposition. As I said. Uh, we have mode one, mode two, and mode three internal tides. And if we uh, plot an, uh, spectrum, a long track spectrum of SSH, we can see we have a spectrum for mode one, uh, spectral peaks for mode one, uh, peaks for mode two, and peaks for mode three. This is a wave number. So th this is another track also for mode one, mode two, mode three. So plan wave, if I use a spatial filter, like this uh, green box shows uh, a band pass fil fil filter here, I can first uh, pick mode two signal, and then later I will use plan wave analysis to separate uh, waves in different directions. And then I can have uh, mode one, mode two, mode three product, uh, and uh, at, and for each mode, I have waves in different directions. So then I will have a better uh, result of the internal tidal field. And uh, this gives an example of uh, this gives how plan wave analysis versus harmonic analysis. So for example. I have multiple satellite altimeter data. If I do harmonic analysis along that track, as uh, uh, Richard did uh, you know, 20 years ago, uh, we have this amplitude. If I show the uh, SS variance you know, in this 160 kilometer window, uh, it shows you know, a pattern like this. This is for, I'm sorry, this is for mode one, M2. Uh, just for mode one M two, and then uh, I apply this uh, data. I use this data as input, and then do uh, plan wave analysis. I can get 
a map like this. So the t their difference is uh, uh, shows in this map. So you can you can see uh, by harmonic analysis, we have um, it actually contains a lot of non-tidal signal, and then by by plan wave analysis, I can really uh, remove that non-tidal signal and have a very uh, clear uh, map. So uh, I will prove uh, this uh, in another slide later. And why we have that much non-tidal signal? That is because the tidal aliasing. So I know many of, many of you know this, uh, the tidal aliasing. But in the simple stories, uh, the satellite sample, sampling rate is uh, uh, like uh, for the ERS is 35 one data uh, per, in, in per cycle. The, the, the repeated cycle is 35 days. If you, if you want to measure in t the tide signal, it's 12 hours period. So the, the tidal signal will aliasing on um, a longer period. For example, this is the frequency cycle per day. Uh, this is uh, uh, the, the spectrum density. So for this one, the M2 uh, is at uh, 94 days uh, rather than uh, 12 hours. So this uh, aliasing period overlap with uh, mesoscale eddies. So when you do harmonic analysis, many of these mesoscale eddies just uh, leak into the uh, harmonic fitted result. That is why we have a lot of uh, non-tidal noise. And that is why we need a, a plan wave analysis uh, to clean up the result. And uh, this is uh, uh, the result of a global uh, mode 1 M2 internal tide from that uh, multi-satellite altimeter data I showed earlier. Uh, and this is amplitude, and this is phase. So you can see here is Hawaii, here is a Polynesian um, island chain, and uh, here it shows uh, the uh, mid-Atlantic rays. And uh, so you can, anyway, you can see uh, many uh, internal tidal beams radiated from these uh, submarine uh, ridges. So I'm sorry, this black contour shows three thousand uh, ISO, uh, ISO best contour. So, and also like uh, uh, Hawaii, I'm uh, Hawaii, Luzon Strait, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, if you look at this phase, because we have uh, as I said, at each grid point, we have three waves. This is a sum of three waves. So because we have multi-wave interference, this phase information is not clear because it is a sum of waves in different direction. So, and that is why, as I said, we want to separate them into uh, northbound and, and southbound uh, signal. So for the northbound, I mean, I just uh, keep waves propagation from uh, east to west and, and going north. And, uh, and now you can see here's Hawaii. You can see these beams is much clearer because uh, the internal tides from Alaska was uh, was removed from uh, this one. That's the southbound waves. So you can see it's clear. And also the phase. Uh, become much clear, and later I will use this one to track their propagation speed later. And uh, so, uh, like beams in the Atlantic Ocean, and uh, this one is show. This one shows uh, the southbound mode one uh, waves uh, in around, uh, falling in this direction range. So. This this one and this one, if they I, they plus together gives this one. So that is what I said. I have 
separate them into southbound and northbound waves. Uh, using this method, I can also calculate uh, S2 in mode one S2 internal tide. So you so this is you can see that I I plot them uh, using different uh, color bar. So uh, this is 24, this is 12. So it's uh, uh, two times uh, difference. So M2 is about uh, like uh, two times stronger, two times strong in strength uh, of uh, the S2 internal tide. And M2 is the dominant one. That is why you can see very clear uh, internal tidal beams. But for S2, um, it's weaker. That is why the noise is relatively stronger. And also, is uh, the as, uh, the, uh, one satellite is uh, uh, ERS and NV set is not uh, quantified for uh, for this calculation. So we have less data, weak signal. So that is not, uh, the S two result is not uh, is not uh, good as M two, but we do have a global map. And O one and K one. So O one and K one. Uh, the strongest generation site is the Luzon Strait. So if this is Taiwan, this is the Philippines. So we, we can see the O K1 internal tide and O1 internal tide, they travel west bound, north bound, uh, <coughs> east bound uh, from Luzon Strait. So the color here shows uh, the phase of the internal tides. And this is a black arrows shows the energy flux. So you can see uh, the internal tide from Luzon Strait can travel across the South China Sea. And this is uh, a Guam Palau. So this is about uh, 2,000 kilo kilometers. And another feature we like, I like to point out is uh, uh, refraction. This, this white curve, sh this, this white curve show for the K1, you can see it bend this way. For the O1, it's bend <coughs> steeply. That is because if you have a wave propagate along this along this direction, so so the oh yeah, so the so we we should start from this one. So the phase velocity is a function of tidal frequency. So it it has. O1 and K1 have the same C, but they have different uh, tidal frequency because they have different uh, tidal period. So it's a, it's, a, it's a function of latitude. So when you have one wave going that way, so the, the, the north part is faster and the southern part is slower. That is why when they propagate away, they just uh, bend uh, this way and uh, tend to parallel to this latitude. And because O1 have um, a greater speed gradient, so it uh, bend faster than uh, the, the, the K1. So that is, we call this a beta effect, refraction due to beta effect. Yeah. And uh, I can also calculate uh, higher mode, I mean, not really higher mode, mode two and mode three. So this one, as I said, I, I have a band pass filter. When I have a band pass filter, I first uh, uh, filter uh, mode one, mode two along track, and then do hum and then do plan wave analysis. So this figure shows Hawaii rates, and it's just it shows the southbound, because the northbound should be uh, very similar, but a diff very similar uh, feature. So in the Hawaii rate, this is mode one uh, internal tidal beams. And this is the mode two M2 from the Hawaii rate and from uh, Lion Island rate here. And this one shows the mode three M2, uh, M2 internal tide. So their amplitude for mode one is uh, 24 uh, millimeter and six millimeter. For mode three, it's two millimeter. So it's a really, really tiny signal at the sea surface, but we do can detect this. And then using this result, you know, we can really 
uh, study the propagation, dissipation of the internal tide and know their uh, dynamics and the decay mechanism uh, in the ocean. So this gives us, uh, you know, this uh, a product. So you can use this for uh, further uh, investigation. And I will show a big map. Just now, I just show the southbound uh, internal tides from Hawaii. And this gives an, uh, big, a big map of M2, uh, mode, one, M, mode 2 M2 internal tide in the Pacific. And this is uh, uh, the 3,000 meter isobest. And you can see the mode 2 uh, internal tide also uh, Radiated from these uh, topographic features and the travel, uh, this is at the most is 1,000 kilometers. This is southbound, northbound. And the, the issues with this product is uh, first, this map shows only the coherent part uh, over 25 years. And also, uh, because I use a band pass there, so this product shows on. Show, missed the eastbound and the westbound uh, signal. So uh, we need to uh, improve this one in the future if we have more. The reason is because the traditional satellite data uh, is not uh, uh, enough. So for example, if we have SWAT data, that's a, a, a wide SWAT uh, altimeter data, we will have a better uh, internal tidal product uh, than this one. And this gives a global map, the same thing, uh, mode 2 M2 internal, a global map. And then uh, in the second part of my talk, I will give uh, uh, several examples of uh, the potential application uh, of internal tidal product. First, uh, we can use this internal tide model to do uh, internal tide correction uh, for uh, like Argo, SWAT. Uh, I will give one example. So uh, previously I showed the internal tide product constructed using data set in this box. And, uh, can I use that model, this model, to correct internal tide uh, for the cross set two altimeter data? So this is the question. So this is another uh, satellite altimeter. Uh, it's along very different track, like like this, and this is the uh, the color one shows here, and. Uh, Totally, for this four data set, we only have uh, uh, about two thousand tracks globally. But for the Corel set two, we have uh, uh, ten thousand uh, ground tracks. So that is why we have very dense tra tracks in this map. And uh, these four data sets give uh, twenty years, of uh, uh, fifty uh, years of d of data set together. And this is only four years. So I will use this model and then uh, to re remove the internal tide from uh, this data set. And this is uh, the uh, variance reduction. After I applied that internal tide model to the Corel set 2 data, so you can see I have removed uh, the M mode 1, M2 internal tide signal uh, from that data set. Uh, as I said, because this internal tide product is using uh, satellite data over this period, and that one is is from uh, 2012, so we have interannual difference because internal tide uh, varies with uh, uh, different uh, stratification and other. Uh, 
uh, processes. So if I uh, made a phase adjust for that model and do that again, I will have a better result. So I will, I will come back to this topic later. And another uh, application is uh, uh, quantified the tidal driven ocean mixing. Uh, earlier, I showed the sea surface height feature, uh, sea surface height amplitude of internal tide. So uh, I can uh, estimate the energy and the flux using that SSA signal. So this equation. By this equation, uh, integral over the depth, I can change, I can calculate a ratio between amplitude and and uh, and uh, the surface amplitude over the interior amplitude. So that means I can using this ratio to convert from SSA to the internal amplitude. And also, I don't want to uh, tell the details of this one. And and I just show that I can also calculate from the sea surface height uh, amplitude to, uh, to calculate the uh, energy and energy flux. Uh, this work shows in uh, appendix of my paper. So by, by these uh, equations, uh, I can convert uh, SSAs from energy flux. So for example, this is a northbound energy flux, and this shows southbound energy flux. So this map, this, this map uh, will address the question like uh, uh, Carl uh, and uh, Walter Mank brought uh, uh, 20 years ago. So, you, so where, the internal, <coughs> where the internal tides dissipate and uh, how long uh, like, uh, uh, they, can, they can travel in the open ocean. So this work is still uh, underway uh, and, and supported by NASA. And another application is uh, I can constrain numerical models like uh, MIT model and a uh, HICOM model. So uh, this, this figure shows the satellite um, result as the, the sum northbound and southbound. Right now in my computer, I have four different models called the gold model, HICOM, MIT GCM, storm tide. These four models, uh, all are global, global run. And uh, these uh, authors, they share me with this uh, harmonic analyzed data. And then using my method called plan wave analysis, I, I can also decompose them into uh, northbound, southbound, northbound, southbound. And this uh, figure shows uh, uh, this decomposition uh, around the Hawaii, Hawaiian rays here. So, so you, so you know, after this uh, decomposition, we can really see uh, the internal tidal beams uh, simulated by these models, and uh, we can we can see how they uh, differ uh, or s s uh, and uh, uh, and our goal in the future is uh, after this comparison, uh, because these models they have different. Uh, uh, decay rate uh, different uh, parameters. So by this comparison, so we can know uh, if their parameters are right, uh, wrong, or they can make uh, the adjustment for better for better simulation. For example, the storm tide model, they have they have a very uh, big number for the decay rate. That is why their beams. Uh, you know, decayed very soon after leaving the generation site. And also, uh, these models and the satellite will together to uh, diagnose what's the dissipation mechanism uh, when the internal tide propagates in the ocean. For example, uh, internal tide interact with the background current, they interact with some metal scale eddies. <laughs> So now, so far, we know nothing about this, this mechanism. The reason is because we do not have any measurement. And uh, then I, the, the, the last one of uh, the application I mentioned here, many, we have many, many different applications. So it's uh, 
monitor the global ocean change, uh, a technique I called, uh, uh, ITOT. ITOT is uh, internal tide oceanic tomography. Uh, I published this paper in uh, 2016. So the story is the speed of internal tide is changed because uh, the strat mainly the stratification is changed. If you have a strong stratification, uh, the internal tides uh, travel faster. If we, if we have a weak uh, stratification, the internal tide uh, travels slower. So I can using this speed change to infer the ocean heat content uh, in the upper side of the ocean. So this idea uh, is uh, similar to acoustic tomography. Uh, brought up by uh, Walter Monk in 1976, that's uh, 40 years ago. So he really shows, so when he like, f here are two examples. One is the heat, is the first one uh, of this experiment. He have a sound sources and then measure the travel time from the sound sources to this receiver and then to track um, the, the, the sound speed and the travel time. And then uh, he has another big one in the North Pacific shows uh, called uh, ad hoc to measure the uh, ocean heat content change. He is using the speed of uh, acoustics. So by the satellite, I use uh, uh, internal tide. Uh, this is one example. So as, as I said, I have uh, about uh, like 25 years of uh, satellite altimeter data. If I divided that year by year, and then for each year, I can uh, estimate the internal tides field. Uh, for example, like, like this one. This is from the uh, Poly Polynesian island ridge somewhere, you know. Uh, this is uh, uh, the equator. So in, this is for year uh, 2000, and this map is for the year of 2005. And uh, along, this, along this black line, if I compare the phase of uh, the mode one internal tide uh, in these two years, you can, you, you can see they are, and the generation side, they are very close, but with time, with propagation away, and uh, they, uh, the difference, you know, uh, become bigger and bigger. That is because uh, the travel speed changes uh, over uh, the over this uh, uh, path. So, if I uh, compare the whole map of this one between these two, uh, that gives the data density uh, along latitude. This is uh, this uh, color map, and this black line is overlap on that map. So the story is with. At, with, t with time, you know, the, the phase difference become bigger and bigger, and then here we can really uh, detect their difference. So, and then if I pull out the difference between S, I mean, the S, the, they have no difference, that is the generation. So the receiver region, if I pull out the travel time over years, I have this uh, uh, red curve shows this one. And I overlap uh, with uh, uh, the El Nino uh, index, that's the green curve. So you can see they agree very well. So this is, not, this is just the shows uh, the feasibility of ITOT. So right now I'm still working on this technique and we will have a better result than this one. But this even really show us the ITOT works. Uh, that means we can, uh, you know, monitor the ocean by uh, their travel times of, of the internal tides. And another example is uh, what's the time? Okay. Another example is uh, uh, in the North Pacific, North Atlantic Ocean. So this this shows the southbound beams. I will track the propagation of internal tide along these two, these two uh, beams. But here I only show the internal tide propagation along this one. 
So this one shows along latitude, their travel time, their their travel times change, not much, because this is a uh, overall prob propagation. So I need to uh, remove the mean. After I remove the mean, so you can see from 1995 to 2015. So I have a curve like shows as the blue, the blue one. And they have a trend. The trend is from is about this one, and the number is here. In two, in 1995, the travel time from here to here is 200 hours, but but in 2015, because the the ocean warming, because the upper ocean warming, so we have a faster propagation, so the travel time now becomes 198. It's two hours uh, difference is about 1% of, of, the, of, the of the speed change. And then uh, I, I can show the detail uh, here. It's very complicated, but uh, I can, using a, a warming profile, and calculate how much ocean heat content is needed if I change if I change the speed by one percent. So, so I calculate the ratio, and then using that ratio, I over plot over plot this over uh, superimpose on this map the Argo measured ocean heat content change. That's the red one. So you can see for I mean this is from uh, Cape Verde here. And you can see the Argo measured ocean heat content change, and the ITOT measured, they overlapped here pretty well. And along this beam is in, in this panel. So both of these two beams show that we have an uh, uh, ocean warming uh, in the North Atlantic. So that is my uh, uh, my proposal. That means, uh, for now, we want to monitor the global ocean warming. So we can use Argo, and we have a ghost ship network. This, this is really expensive because only several years you can repeat this track. And, uh, and it takes uh, like uh, several months to occupy the one, one, uh, one line. And you can use the XBT. When you have uh, opportunity uh, ship from like uh, Japan to America, you can drop XPT, you know, along this uh, uh, ship track. And also we can use ITOT using satellite altimetry to detect the internal tides and detect the, the very tiny change of speed of internal tides to infer uh, ocean heat content change. So, uh, either of these methods is uh, uh, enough, but if we combine them together, we will have a, a better answer and a better <coughs> understanding. So this is my talk. So here's a summary. So uh, in the past uh, like uh, more than 10 years, uh, I have been working on this. So now I have a global internal tide product, including M2, S2, O1, K1, and I, for each one, I have mode one, mode two, mode three. Uh, so this, mod, this internal tide model, uh, I can model this, um, you can say mode one, uh, you can say M2, S2. So I call internal tide models can uh, predict amplitude and phase uh, at any uh, location uh, of the world ocean. And uh, I have calculated the energy and flux from this uh, sea surface height signal. And then I can calculate their propagation speed uh, in, in, in the ocean. Uh, but um, much work needed to be needed to do next because most my the, the limitation is because the available of data. Uh, and in the future, one uh, promising thing missing is the SWAT data. If we have SWAT data, uh, I can have a, a better internal tidal product uh, for sure. 
for uh, potential application of my product. So uh, we can uh, make internal tide correction for other data set like SWOT, Argo, if you have glider data. Uh, and also uh, we can uh, using this one to estimate energy and then to estimate the ocean mixing uh, caused by internal tide. And then we can study their uh, decay mechanism, uh, the interaction between internal tides and the sub scale eddies. Uh, many of these questions have uh, uh, no answer uh, yet. And also, uh, this model and the method, my, mo my, my product and the method uh, can be used to analyze the global numerical model and then to uh, provide, uh, you know, constraints uh, for, their, uh, for their future uh, improvement. And uh, the most important one I like, I think, is uh, the internal tide ocean oceanic uh, tomography to monitor the global ocean by the uh, internal tides. Uh, so I think I will stop here. So I'd like to take uh, any questions you have. So we normally think about internal waves as moving the sea surface, but only really only by the first mode. So I'm kind of curious how you're able to detect three modes, and what is the ratio of the surface movement on the basis of those? Uh, yes, that's a, that's a good question. You know, that is why um, uh, now we know mode one can be detectable for sure. Yeah, that's uh, uh, we we learned uh, in the past uh, decades, uh, um, more than twenty years. And the mode two and the mode three, I just you know started to work on this like uh, three years ago. It's really uh, a surprise uh, when I first detected the mode two and the mode and the mode three signal because, as I showed there, for the mode three, we only have one millimeter amplitude. So it's really a tiny signal. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting, yeah. But we are pretty sure it's a model two or model three internal tide signal. That the reason is because uh, uh, by my method, I first do the uh, spatial fitting to get a model, get the wavelengths, you know. And then by the plan wave analysis to fit uh, uh, frequency and wavelengths to get you know, all together. So that is why I believe it is uh, internal tide, but it's just a very tiny signal. Yeah. Do, do you have any uh, in situ like more measurement to confirm that? Like uh, I, I think I, I should have. From the high mode. High mode? Yeah, I mean, low mode. Uh, so that is one uh, that is one work I'm doing actually. So you can see uh, to the north of Hawaii Ridge, we have five moorings uh, deployed. Uh, that's uh, ten years ago. So this uh, mooring have uh, MMP. So it have a continuously uh, continuous profile of uh, of temperature, salinity, and velocity. So using this, this data set, I can compare, uh, compare the satellite measurement with uh, uh, this mooring measurement to, uh, you know, to make sure this is uh, mode two and mode three signal. Yeah. But the problem is for, this, any, for these moorings, we cannot separate the southbound and northbound signal because you have, one, have a single station mooring this model measure the total energy and energy flux at this specific site. But by satellite altimetry, I can se separate them into northbound and southbound. So the comparison will be a little complicated, but it's doable. Uh, one, one more follow-up. So um, you talk about one terawatt being the energy globally that goes into these 
internal wave modes. Yes. I, I forgot. What is the what, what's the total uh, yeah. energy of the of the yeah, yes. You know, what, what percentage goes into yeah. the internal wave? Yes. The, uh, that number is based on uh, Gary Egbert and Richard Ray uh, in the year of 2000. So the, the one terawatt is total, means, uh, one, uh, it means M2, S2, O1, K1 all together first. And then all mode, mode 1, mode 2, because they, 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 they calculate, what they calculated is the better tropic tide loss, not, uh, not the internal tide generation, better tropic tide loss. So that is uh, the total number. So based on our current understanding, uh, M2 is the dominant one. So two thirds of that one goes to mo, mo, M2. And the S2 and O1, K1, all other account for one third of that number. So my, I guess what I'm really getting at is we have dissipation of tides by friction. Uh -huh. and conversion of barotropic uh -huh. energy into baroclinic and, and then it dissipates some other way. Uh -huh. What is the ratio of the conversion from barotropic to baroclinic versus the dissipation oh, along the bottom? Yeah, of yeah. Uh, yes. So for the total uh, barotropic loss, uh, barotropic tidal loss uh, is, two, is 3.5 terawatts. 3.5 terawatts, so that is why third yeah, one third goes to uh, internal tidal, and the two thirds goes to the friction, as you said, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you showed the examples of global maps of mode one uh, and two internal tides, so I have a simple question. This one? Uh, mode one, uh, mode one, this is mode two. Yeah, so either one. What is the time period, or what is the temporal resolution um, so the data I use the e is this one. So, so far we only have uh, set of altimeter data from uh, 1992. That's from the lens of uh, topics of Poseidon. And uh, we have uh, more satellites is orbiting the Earth right now, about five, I guess, of we have five different altimeter data, altimeter satellites right now. So this data set will keep growing. But by my work, I use data from 1992 until this one. Yeah, it's 20 years of. So that map is a composite of 20 years of data. Uh, yes, uh, you can call it a composite, or you can call it a 20 year mean. It's a, a mean. So what is the finest? Uh, no. Every week? No. Year. <laughs> oh, that's my question. Yeah, that's Every the year. Week, you know. The reason is uh, the limited factor is, uh, is the, repeat, the repeating cycle of satellite altimeter data. For example, we only have one, one for example, topic of Poseidon is every 10 days, it repeats one, uh, the track. So for this one, it's, uh, 35 days for the ERS data set. So that is why we don't have uh, enough so data. So year is your finest? Uh, I, I think so. So it de also depends on the um, where. For example, here is Hawaii. I have a strong uh, internal tide. We know that. So we can use one year and then to reduce the non-tidal noise. But for example, if you want to study internal tide here, it's very weak internal tide there, so you need more, da more data. So, so even for your uh, plane wave method, you also need to uh, think about the aliasing frequency, right? Uh, uh, not, not much, because you know, for the tidal aliasing, that, that, that is calculated uh, as an example, so you have one data per cycle. But for the plane wave analysis, you can cover like uh, more tracks. So it can alleviate that kind of limit, limit, limitation, but not uh, totally free of tidal aliasing. It's very complicated. The number is, the, 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 the key is, we don't have enough data. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about the, uh, 
your calculation seems very uh, kind of related to the stratification data you use. So how sensitive is the like the magnitude of the turn tides you got on the uh, stratification values? Uh, very sensitive or not that sensitive? Uh, not that sensitive. Yeah. So, uh, for example, so when I'm doing uh, plane wave analysis, I use uh, two parameters as input, as input. That is, uh, key is a theoretical wave number. That is from uh, uh, WOA 2013, that's a World Ocean Atlas. That gives us uh, a many uh, multi-year mean uh, stratification. So, the, so, as I showed there, so, from one year to another year, so the change of stratification, as the change of speed is only 1% at the most, so at most like 2%. So that means this number, if you use like a key or 1% more than key, so it doesn't affect my feeling too much. Because, because overlay, the ocean stratification is pretty Stable. Yeah, for the for the, uh, the tomography part, you mentioned what? you kind of uh, can on the other way, but looking at the uh, propagation speed of the internal tide mm -hmm. to infer the change of uh, uh -huh. stratification. Oh, I see. I see. I see. And, I and see. that's kind of related to the temperature of the country. So yeah, so yeah. I just see that's a there's a loop here. Or there's no loop, just only some loops or things. Yeah, no, no loop. So I can, uh, I have, uh, I have made uh, several tests. For example, I update data analysis using a little different wave numbers uh, key there, and I do a new uh, calculation, and then just compare uh, what's the difference using different key. So it's uh, uh, just a very, very small. Yeah. Am I correct that over two decades you identified a 1% increase in the velocity of internal tides? Yes. Do you have any theories for that? And um, is global warming any factor in that? And global ocean warming is that any factor? Uh, can you repeat? Yes. Am I, am I making myself clear on that? Uh, maybe it's my clue I'm, I'm, where I'm asking. So what's, yeah. Any theories on to account for the increase, one percent increase over two decades mm -hmm. in the velocity of internal tides? Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, you're correct. Yes. Any theories that you have on why that happens? Oh, uh, oh yeah. You, um, I. I don't know any theory about that, but I, you, as you, I showed there, I just compare with the Argo measurement. So I don't have any uh, theoretical, um, you know, it, it uh, background. Very good correlation yeah. Between the increase of the the, the, the internal tide speed and the global warming. Yeah. The increasing of the global warming. Correlation, but not necessarily. Yeah, exactly. But, but that's what. Uh, oh, but happened. I mean, from pure physics, that's what you would expect. Right. Yeah. 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 The phase yeah. speed should change, change increase, the yeah. Yeah. changing the stratification. Yeah. Oh yes. Any other questions? Mm, yeah. Done. So I the the results that you have on the uh, using it for a tomography type of experiment is really cool. I hadn't seen that before. Uh, have okay. you actually done that calculation for the global oceans yet? Or is it just in those regional? Uh, I, I'm working on working on that. Okay, cool. yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and right now, uh, I, I'm, I'm working on that because, uh, uh, to tell you the truth, when I showing that, that's a, that is a very strong internal tidal beam. That means if we have a strong internal tidal beam, we'll have a better result. And then, I found. Uh, I should, you know, improve my plan wave analysis. I said, as I said earlier, so I'm still working on that method. So if I have a better method, I can, you know, really reduce the non-tidal noise and have a better phase information. If I have a better phase information, I can have a better uh, technique. I thought technique. So because, it's a challenge. Because as, as you know, 
we're most uncertain on estimating the upper ocean heat content from the 90s into the Argo area uh -huh. period, and there are problems matching those records. Oh. And so if your experiment mm -hmm. and your method can actually Fade calculate back. what back. the uh, warming was, that's very critical for determining what the, uh, the, the yeah. storage rate is. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, and so that would be really a nice uh, set of data. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think the idea of using this as an ongoing monitoring of a <coughs> upper ocean heat content mm -hmm. is really not going to compete with Argo uh, uh -huh. and, the, and those types of measurements. But I think filling in that gap when we had limited observations mm -hmm. is very important. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Confirmation. Yeah. 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 And I mean, your, your comparisons with Argo, at least in those two areas, was very, was amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Can we can people go run model, tidal model, use the uh, like echo estimate, mm -hmm. run tidal model, get some internal information, whatever, the flyer thing, then you know the thread rate change, you know the temperature change, uh -huh. then you run tidal model, put it into a type there and see what we can get or something like that, can apply your method. It's, it's also a way to prove your, to, to confirm your method works really well. So it can be done, but uh, it's a, it's a not it's not that meaningful because uh, right now you, if we want to monitor global warming, you can use the Argo. If we want to study internal tide, you can you know just run internal tide model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm not sure whether your information will have something from the uh, the abyss of ocean.